Mr Speaker. I, I call Matt Ducey. Yeah, no. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Uh, it's an honour to rise and speak of support of the third reading of the Residential Tenancies uh, Amendment Bill. And it's great to hear the support of the main parties in the House for this very important bill and the impact it will have on families and young children and, and really what, what Kiwis would vote against a bill like this. Mr Speaker, I just want to touch on four key points uh, in my call on the third reading uh, tonight. The first one, I just want to talk about the government's activity in the space. I want to touch on the um, important aspect around smoke alarms. Also, I want to talk about the positive impact the select committee, uh, ably chaired by Alfred Naro, and the impact that had around the submissions, and especially around the increasing the penalty for unlawful act, which will help redress that possible imbalance between vulnerable tenants and maybe intimidatory landlords as well. And then, if I have time, Mr Speaker, um, talk about how the compliance and how this will be inspected uh, once it's implemented as well. It's fair to say this, this bill, Mr Speaker, needs to be passed tonight. Uh, this is a bill that will warm up a lot of houses in New Zealand, make a lot of houses safer by installing smoke alarms. When you look at the government's track record in this space, Mr Speaker, since 2001, we've invested $500 million invest, uh, ins insulating houses in New Zealand. We've insulated 50,000 state houses. We've got the warm-up uh, house warm-up New Zealand programme, as well as retrofitting 280,000 private rentals. And I know when I visit uh, the Canterbury District Health Board and Community Energy Action, uh, those initiatives of warming up uh, frequent flyers to the A&E departments in our hospitals uh, is great results, not only for the community, but it improves the well-being of those families and those children as well, Mr Speaker. Because currently we know under the Residential Tenancy Act there is no requirement around insulation and smoke alarms. So it's great that 270,000 private rentals will be insulated because of this legislation, Mr Speaker. We know 56% of them, or around 150,000, are low-income earners. So there we are, a government that cares, a government that listens, and it's responding to people's needs, Mr Speaker, especially those the most vulnerable. And that's why regulation is the next step, Mr Speaker. We know once this bill is passed tonight, from the 1st of July 2016, social housing will require insulation, and we know that private residential tenancies from the 1st of July 2019. Could I just go on to talk about smoke alarms, Mr Speaker? In my uh, hometown of Rangiora, uh, a great, uh, there we go, Mr Prosser, uh, a great constituent of mine in Rangiora, oh, and uh, of course he does. Of course he does. And, uh, we, we, we've, we've got a hard-working, 36-strong uh, uh, volunteer fire brigade, men and women, who give their time. The middle of the night, they get up. Their employers allow them to leave work uh, during the day when that alarm goes off. And I fortunately brought the Prime Minister in to have a look at their new $3 million Rangiora fire station. And when you talk to our volunteer firemen and women who sacrifice a lot of time, uh, the stories they tell us about a lot of fires they go to that could have been avoided, a lot of fatalities that could have been avoided, Mr Speaker. Uh, and it's great that we're supporting our volunteer firemen and women around this legislation. We know that uh, in New Zealand there's about 20 fatalities a year that could be prevented, and we know that by this legislation, by putting smoke alarms in these 200, 270,000 private rentals, it'll possibly prevent up to three fatalities a year, Mr Speaker. So that's why I commend this bill to the House. Mr Speaker. I call Materia 